seen the light. I am a human of the Alliance. I am a team of the... I would never roll a troll. I am the best paladin in the world. Never! A paladin is a holy character. It's holy. You have to bow. Oh, S-Fan's not gonna like that one, huh? For me. I'm on the throne, I'm the elite, I'm the best. You're running around like a little sex in the street. It's a honor for you, PvE, no? Alright. How exactly did one of the world's most successful YouTubers and streamers manage to fall so far into obscurity that he now talks to a total of four people during his live streams? This is the story of Athene, or Bashir Bumaza. In 2007, back when YouTube was still in its infancy, Bashir created a character known as Athene, who... Remember what I said before about how you never break character? That's what you do. You never, ever, ever break character. ...would go on to become a voice for all gamers. Athene's personality was that of a glorified troll who would lavish in his conceit and greatness. Yes. Central to the personality of it's Athene were video. claims of gaming accolades nerds could only dream of. Well, the best part is that it wasn't really a claim. Like, he actually did do a lot of this stuff. That's what made it... See, like, Athene... If he wasn't actually good at the game, would have just been like a meme. But it was really funny because it was actually true. With tall tales of being rank one in World of Warcraft, yeah. having a perceived hot girlfriend, and a loyal group of friends Tanya behind him, hot, Athene be not only seemed to talk the talk, but actually walk it. Exactly. Bashir creating Athene allowed him to effectively blur the line of his true personality and that of a degenerate gamer. But how did one of the biggest names in the digital world go from interviews on CNN and having a TED talk to shilling crypto mobile games live on YouTube? To be fair, there's a lot of people that do that. The difference is that the other guys do it whenever it's an ad. Most of you will remember Athene from the good old days on YouTube, but oh, yeah. according to his own documentary, he actually had a successful career before YouTube was even a thought. Shit, right? Seven years before the character Athene was born, Bashir lived in Belgium and broke out onto the scene as one of the 20 housemates on Big Brother, a Belgian reality TV show. But he was evicted early on, coming in 19th place. Alright, so not a good start, but he was still young. At 20 years years old, he participated in local elections as part of a youth organization under Groen, Belgium's Green Party. That is pretty cool. I mean, yeah, that that's that's cool. Yeah, this guy was in like fucking these like weird reality shows doing this at the same time. Yeah, that's cool. Five years later, he co-founded his own political protest organization called Knee. As the spokesman for Knee, he aimed at helping citizens who were Python? frustrated at elected officials. Since it's mandatory to vote in Belgium, Knee gave voters an out by allowing them to cast blank ballots. During Smart. this time, Knee's lead candidate for the Belgian Senate was Tanya Dervos. This could have been one giant troll to the earliest known incels out there, using shock value marketing techniques to get their voices heard heard. He easily could have thought that this would secure them a spot in the Belgian government. And apparently, she actually went through with her promise. It was essentially VR porn before VR porn. Ni nee would ultimately die out, failing to win local and federal oh elections in both 2006. I mean, that's impressive, right? It's like you get your booba girlfriend to be the leader of a fake political party and, and you meme it into basically existence and he's, he's only 25 years old. That's pretty fucking good, man. That's impressive. He's ahead of the times and 2007, oh, which Bruba. left Bashir yeah. on his own. So he gathered his friends and decided to try something new. Bashir's first ever video on YouTube is him trash talking other players in the famous MMORPG World of Warcraft. Besides being a time capsule back to 2008, it yeah. captures the entire digital persona of Athene, Absolutely. being arrogant and self-centered. Yep. The video features his trusted second in command, Reese, who is zoned out in the back. Wait, well that that's Furious. Reese is like Furious's cousin or brother or something like that. Yeah, that's Furious. 
OG Bell Furious. Athene amusingly rambles on that he's the best paladin right. and everyone else sucks at the game. If you look close enough, you can almost see the light bulb <laughs> appear above his head. I'm going to do this for the rest of my life. And it's like, I think the best part about this video is the fact that like, he was just talking and the entire time, Furious is just sitting there behind him, just playing the game. It's like the camera's not even on, nothing's really going on, it's just another day in the life. This is who this is I am perfect. now, and so, Athene was born. More videos yep. were posted showcasing were so Athene's good. instigator behavior that was loved by the internet. The problem with nailing down who exactly Athene is, is that he switches between different personalities whenever it suits him. He has his World of Warcraft personality, gamer, yep. troll, a political, philosophical, and scientific personality, and a cryptocurrency meta-ironic personality that can- I feel like it was really the crypto, the crypto personality that people were not in favor of. All the other ones were pretty much fine. ...be best described as- It's all a scheme to get your money, and it's working. It's almost as if you need to play some sort of character to get famous. These videos were so fucking good. And the best part about it was people would get so furious on the forums because they didn't know if he was being serious or not. But what I liked about Athene is that he was just such, he was such an unapologetic asshole. And I just always really liked that a lot. Athene found this out early. True. Very fucking true. Goddamn. But ended up thinking, yeah. the more characters, the merrier. Now, you can say that these are just his interests, but when he justifies mm -hmm. behavior for one of them, he just hides behind the character. No one could have known the depths of his character back then, and Athene had a knack for capturing audiences, climbing to one of the top three most subscribed YouTube channels. There oh, were yeah, he was super fucking popular. Like, Athene was like, Athene was like mainstream popular. Like, if you were paying attention to YouTube, you knew who Athene was. Two main reasons as yeah, to why Athene yeah. found explosive success. World of Warcraft was one of the most popular and revolutionary MMORPGs of its day, with over 12 million active players at its peak. Yep. Athene was seen as a gamer god. He also had an entire group of people behind him. His closest friend, Reese Leeson, Reese's brother, codenamed Furious, Ian the cameraman, yep. Tanya, Athene's girlfriend, and clickbait, and dozens of others. <laughs> this team dynamic actually allowed him to have an impact on the internet by scaling content and initiatives. Well, it's like he had all of his, I, I think that him having his friends on the stream made it so much better. Like if it was just a theme, it wouldn't have been as funny. It was funny whenever like, remember Tanya came over and she like took all of his hair and she made it this like little fucking, uh, this little braid or something on top of his head. Like he was like a, a, a pygmy doll or something like that. It was so fucking funny. And then like Furious just like randomly he's talking about like fucking, you know, playing the, the keyboard like a the guitar. Furious randomly just gets up and starts thrusting against the CRT monitor while he's talking about this. Like while they're playing WoW. It was so fucking good because it was random. And like back then you've got to remember like people didn't really have like the context of like... Oh, okay, this is a character. So people just went into it and thought to themselves, wow, this guy's fucking crazy. What is this? It's so funny. That's the big reason, yeah. Faster than smaller channels. I mean, if you want to make it on YouTube today, you literally need a team. Athene also used the motto, together to the top, or TTTT for short, in order to boost engagement. Yeah. Get it to the top. This meant that Athene would personally congratulate and incentivize those who created a YouTube video or any digital content which praised him. This was such a good idea. It was actually such a crazy good fucking idea. And the best part about it is that it worked. A glorified sub for sub. A virtual, yeah. you scratch my back and I scratch yours. Exactly. Giving him more attention and views for basically nothing. Yeah. Besides an incredible amount of time. Think of it like Cameo. A personalized message for anyone who wanted to partake. Together to the Top yeah, is a perfect farming. example of Athene's brute force, success at all costs mentality. There and the thing is, like, the brute force, success at all costs mentality worked. That's, I think, one thing that, like, let's keep this all in mind. It was massively fucking successful.
There was just one issue. Athene may have gained a boatload of attention in a short amount of time, but he had no way to truly monetize his content. There were no partner programs or sponsors back in the day. Unlike this video, which is why today's video is sponsored by Zbiotics. Engineered by PhD scientists, Zbiotics is a probiotic drink that breaks down the byproduct of alcohol known as acetaldehyde, which is most responsible for rough mornings after drinking. All you have to do is drink one bottle of Zbiotics before your first drink of alcohol. It doesn't matter if you're gonna have one drink or many. Of course, you wanna make sure that you drink responsibly, pace yourself, and get a good night's sleep. So you don't wanna drink while you're driving, guys. Yeah, you don't, yeah, don't, you don't wanna do that. You can then enjoy the next day feeling refreshed, ready to make the most of it, because sometimes those midweek claws or pumpkin beers just hit different. Additionally, Zbiotics has been alcohol. rigorously tested and is FDA compliant for safety. Ingredients include water, patented probiotic, and natural flavor. Best of all, if you're not satisfied, Zbiotics offers a 100% money back guarantee. I actually have a party this Saturday, and I can't wait to share some extra Zbiotics I have with friends to see what they think. Get 15% off your first order of Zbiotics pre alcohol probiotic by clicking the link down below and using my code Philion. And thank you to Zbiotics for sponsoring this video. So through. Yeah, I never really, uh, never really did any drinking. I didn't like it because it cost too much money. It was expensive to get to get drunk, like compared to like just buying a soda or something like that. Yeah. Media connections and determination, he was able to make a feature film and a TV series revolving around him. Despite the success of Athene, people began to point out the fact that he was carried in arenas to rank one, that he boosted his League of Legends account and was potentially viewbotting his Twitch streams to make it appear like more people were watching him. However, oh, he was definitely viewbotting. Like Athene was 100% viewbotting. Like I mean, whether it got carried in arena or not, it's like 15 years ago. Who the fuck? knows right it's hard to say uh, but but there were like accomplishments like for example like it, it's it's undeniable that he got like the pretty much the world first level 80 for example and, and he was like very much in those types of competitions like, he got the first level 60 in diablo uh as well so i mean like these are these are things that he did accomplish so i i don't think that like it was a uh you know it was not built on a throne of lies i don't know about league of legends either i have no idea but like absolutely the twitch thing was you botted 100 percent without a question for this controversy never seemed to bother him after all he had big plans eye power was athene's way of creating a movement a lifestyle. It had three principles that you must follow. You had to be open-minded, you okay. had to actively be thinking, okay. and you had to put their vision into practice. Right, iPower so was essentially just Athene's self-help YouTube channel. This was a strange time for yep. Athene and his team, as they gravitated towards a more philosophical understanding of the world around them. I, I feel like this was the turning point, by the way. Like, this, whenever he started making these videos about, like, science and shit, I think that's what really kind of started making it weird. Before that, it was totally fucking fine. The, the science arc and then everything after that was whenever it became a problem. I guess Athene just wanted to hit every demographic. In 2011, he would post Athene's yep, Theory of Everything. This video supposedly explains new developments in neuroscience and has solutions to many unsolved problems in physics. This was such a drastic switch from his usual content, yeah, so as you could well. guess, his yeah, audience exactly. didn't know how to react. But if you've been paying attention, this didn't come out of the blue. Athene admitted in an interview yeah. that he wanted wanted to poke people and get them to start thinking about metaphysical topics. One year later, Athene would host a campaign called Operation Sharecraft through the Save the Children oh, yes. organization. Okay. Through streaming, Athene raised $1 million for this initiative. The money. fame, along with cult-like community support, awarded him his own item in the popular MOBA League of Legends, Athene's Unholy Grail. This Certainly right. And, uh, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, for the kids, yeah, for the kids, scam the kids. I, my understanding is that there was never any evidence that Athene scammed people. I never saw any conclusive evidence that Athene actually scammed people.
This one million grew to more than $10 million by March of 2015. However, the project didn't stop there and eventually raised an astounding $20 million, which solidified Athene as an ambassador for Save the Children. However, not everyone was convinced, myself included. After all, $20 million is it's an absurd of amount of money. I don't believe in, in any of the numbers that he's, <laughs> that he's giving. I just, it's not possible that he could raise that much money. During the height of Athene, he... I think that it would be possible that he could have raised $20 million. I don't, I don't find it to be unlikely because you have to keep in mind that, like, nobody else was really doing this kind of stuff. So he had, like, a 100% market share and everybody was talking about it. You've got to keep that in mind. Everybody was fucking talking about it. And it wasn't like he raised $20 million in a day or so. Like, he raised it over a point of time. And whenever I think about the money that I've raised for, like, different organizations and stuff like that, and then I put that in the context of, like, what if I was always doing this and this was, like, a massive promotion? And also, like, a number of other people that have, like, really big charity donation amounts, the way that they get those amounts is they basically have companies donate to them for the charity. So they promote the company. The company looks good because they're donating to the charity. So it's basically like, um, you know, fucking you suck my dick, I'll suck yours marketing. That's basically it. So I think that the $20 million number is not completely unrealistic as somebody who has done stuff similar to this especially at the scope that he was doing it and in the fact that like nobody else was doing it market share the amount of people involved etc i don't think that it's completely un unlikely gained a Impossible. partnership with razor that would further place him on the gamer god razor, pedestal huh? during dreamhack in wow. 2014 athene piloted protests against net neutrality swaying yeah, he was really big on this stuff and, and like i remember like this is one of the things like i was happy whenever razor picked us up because it was like razor like the, you know they were the first fucking people that were like sponsoring people like athene and like swifty back in the day and youtube they were like the OGs to actually put money on the table and actually support content creators. Back into the political sphere. Undoubtedly, Athene's charity work is something that he and his team should be proud of. Yes. But he's living proof that you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a villain. One thing Athene understood then and now is viral marketing clickbaiting his own girlfriend and spouting outlandish claims all for i don't think it was that big of a deal to clickbait the girlfriend i feel like she probably didn't even mind it she probably yeah she i I've no, i don't know i mean like if she did mind it i'm pretty sure she wouldn't have been with him for like 10 years yeah there's plenty of guys that clickbait their girlfriends i clickbait my ex-girlfriends for the That's sake how bad of I attention. So I Ironically enough, about... <laughs> Athene was doing exactly what streamers do today. He preached that he was the best at World of Warcraft. Like, Athene to this day, I think, probably has made the best WoW content of anybody ever. True. It was like this really, really good mix of real life stuff and like wow stuff yeah it was and the lifestyle it was like the lifestyle that was like associated with it yep he even started That's gambling right. the man did it all in fact athene was so good at poker he turned five dollars into three hundred thousand in one year and just like streamers with their gambling bullshit it was all too good to be true athene going by the name sharen 80 and another player 3j55 were given partnerships to help promote the poker stars brand. They both figured out a loophole where they could earn 100% rake back on every transaction. Smart. They would chip dump back and forth on different tables, making money from every single hand that they played. They took blind advantage of the technicality for too long. Their employer, PokerStars, found out, and repercussions were settled behind closed doors. This Look, man, hey, yo, there was not a single Athene accomplishment that I think ever happened that was 100% legitimate, right? Like all of them, there was like, ah, yeah, but they do like that experience thing. And like, did he really supposed to like, and that's, that was the best part about it though. Like, that's what I think that people might not realize is that the fact that the accomplishments and all of these things were gray, it made everybody talk about them because they're like, well, yeah, he won, but he cheated. Uh, yeah, but they didn't cheat and they lost and he won. So there it is. He's the winner. You know, yeah, win trade for Gladiator. Hey, yo, you win, you win. 
This could have been because poker stars didn't exactly have a stellar reputation either. They'd been known to screw over their own professional players. Let's make one thing clear. Without a doubt, Athene was ahead of his time. He, he was, was crazy, he was charitable, he was a troll, he was a thief. He was scamming with crypto before it was written into the social media influence. That's what was so crazy, like Athene was scamming. Dude, this guy was like, as I said, with everything that he did, he was five years ahead of his time. Scamming people with crypto? Bro, like, th this is probably before FTX even existed. And he was making these like little bullshit things try to get people involved with him. Yeah, it was impressive. Answers playbook. Yes, he raised a ton of money for charities, but uses it as the basis for his moral superiority when deflecting his mistakes. There are even people who believe, yes, he scammed people with fake crypto, but at least the money is going to a charity. My understanding is that the cryptocurrency thing was proven undeniably fake. Like it was, I don't know, big surprise guys, the cryptocurrency promotion that the theme was doing and the cryptocurrency promotion that was happening, uh, it was turned out to be bullshit. Big surprise, I know. If you have to scam people Shop. to donate, what the hell is the point? And no one really knows how much of the money he kept for himself. Yeah, Luckily, Athene scams didn't gain as much popularity as he once had. Maybe because he admitted to it all on stream. It's all a show in a Fugazi. We promote it that way. Nobody's telling you this is fucking real. Okay, it's a show. Okay, let's say you get scammed. Even if you do get scammed. Okay, whatever. You got scammed. Okay. I fucking told you guys. It's all a fucking scam, so it's not even an argument. If I go to my viewers, right, and I say, get fucking purpose and doobie, you're gonna get scammed, and you get on it, then nobody else, you can't go afterwards to people say, like, I got How scammed. How do you invest in something called doobie? Like, doobie, like, come on, like, it, it, that's such a dumb name. Like, dubious, dookie, like, uh, come on, man. No, it's it's part of the fucking show, man. Clearly, this is no excuse. No, I think the reality is, like, Aiden said that he was fucking was part of some crypto scam, too. Like, that MILF coin thing or whatever it was. But the difference between, like, Aiden and Athene is charisma. See, like, Aiden can scam the whole audience and be like, Yeah, well, I mean, look, like, you guys knew that shit was fucked up. It is what it is, right? All right, yo, I'm bringing this other girl on. We're going to go on a date with her, right? And then so immediately move on to the next thing. And that's the thing. Is that people never gave a fuck is because he's funny, people like him, and, uh, you know, the content's still there. That's all there is to it. Yeah, you can get away with anything if you have the right charisma for it. If you, if you approach it in the right way. Confirms his actions by saying, everyone knew it was a scam the whole yeah, time. Funny. This is not only the face of a pathetic grease slime ball, <laughs> this is also the face of a successful cult leader running a very successful scam through yeah. Twitch right now. If you've been on the internet for any length of time, specifically on YouTube, this unsavory face is one you've definitely come across. This is- And it, it, he just doesn't look like, the thing is, like, in this photo, he doesn't look like a winner. And that's really what it comes down to. It's like, where are we at? We're at 1353. Like, meanwhile, in these videos over here, he looked like a fucking winner. Yeah, he, this guy was absolutely a fucking winner. And that's what the difference was. It had nothing to do with, like, what he was saying or anything like that. Look like a winner and you win. Definitely come across. This is a it theme matters a lot. of World of Warcraft fame. This man is still just barely around, but he has a very devout following of lunatics, just yep. absolutely fanatical maniacs. These people would lay across a bed of broken glass and molten rocks and let Athene walk over them while he's pissing in their face and they would be taking that golden shower with a smile and a big thank you. Perhaps Athene thought that being so in your face with his scheme yeah. would somehow work to his benefit. However, Athene's fame began to crumble. He simply became a liability, which was no longer adequate for big name brands. Raise now, the reason why it, it happened is very simple. It's because he stopped making the content that made him popular. If he just kept doing that content, people would still be watching Athene today.
Spencer, who had been with Athene since 2012, ended their partnership with him due to the building allegations. If you were to take a look at his life now, it's just sad. He lives in a commune with an entire group of volunteers, which Athene says is led by Reese. According to him, he doesn't run the show anymore. He is merely a bystander who does an occasional stream here and there, but it's really just people popping in to see if he's alive. This team, or movement as he calls it, is named the Singularity Group. Oh, if you want to see that. inside the group, YouTuber Budesu joined their living quarters named Ooh. The Compound and still works for the team today. Oh, the wow. building they live in is apparently owned by Reese, who provides them with shelter and food. There's even meal plans, and in turn, they work on Gaming for Good. Gaming for Good is a nonprofit whose mission is apparently of charitable opportunities for all gamers. In other words, they make games and use the money you spend on said games for their own charitable opportunities. Where do I sign up? I, I I feel like I mean shit. <laughs> yeah, this is I mean, yeah. Who wants to join? This looks good to me. The game that supposedly generates the most money for the group is Clash of Streamers or Mobile Minigames, a casual mobile game where you spend his shit coins for some awesome prizes. And if you didn't already know, Athene's cryptocurrencies, Purpose or PRPS, and Doobie are bullshit. Twitch, the platform he streamed on, didn't stop his crypto scam, but did ban him once the controversy was revealed. Though today, Athene has a Twitch account where he just pushes his mobile games because that's all he has left. Don't forget- I, I don't know why uh, Twitch, like, I mean, it's the same thing with, like, Slicker, right? It's like, you can have undeniable evidence that it's a scam, and they're like, yeah, wow, bro, like, that shit's crazy, huh? Wow. God damn. So, like, they scammed him? Well, you know, I guess we'll unpartner him for a week. <laughs> Forget the games they've created to push their crypto are just a way to make revenue for the Singularity Group. Uh -huh. Without it, the company would go bankrupt. Oddly enough, the game relies on you drooling over Athene as his face is plastered all over the place. Who is playing this? You can see he puts scam levels at the bottom because he's ironically scamming. Smart. Nowadays, Athene receives little to no views on his stream or channel, which is a stark contrast to his videos. Yeah, it's like, look at these videos and, and like the thumbnails were just like, I love how you guys always go and be like, man, girls on Twitch is so shameless. Man, these, these hoes, like, man, this is some bullshit. There, well, this is why we like Andrew Tate. And look at this is nine years ago. This shit was all over YouTube. And I remember I would click on some of these and then it'd just be a theme. And he's like talking about like drinking Kool Aid or something. It's like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, it worked. In the past, even if they were clickbait, and I'm not the first one to point this views. out. Both Dr. K and People Make Games have interviewed Athene after they had heard about several controversies surrounding this. him and the Singularity Group. According to ex-members of the Commune, People there is evidence family. of emotional abuse which occurred at the compound. No. Chris Bratt led the investigation into the abuse scandals, but did not receive the answers he wanted. Yeah, In the video, Athene refuses to take any responsibility. When confronted with a simple, genuine question, he will never answer yes or no, blame cancel culture, or rely on convoluted ways of cryptic speech to muddy the original question or point. The emotional abuse that Chris Bratt was investigating is detailed by a woman known as Katarina, who fled the Singularity Group and exposed abuse and manipulation inflicted upon her by Athene. Katarina claimed he threatened to sue her for defamation and that she has feared for her life. As of three years ago, Katarina has been so heavily influenced by Athene that she has left and rejoined his cult several times. Someone. That just sounds weird. 
Like, I, that sounds pretty fucking... It, it's very hard to know, like, is she crazy? Is he crazy? Are they both crazy? I think that's probably what it is, by the way. Uh, but it just, yeah, it, it's like, what's going on? Is this Stockholm Syndrome? Like, what is this? Like, it's very, very weird. I wouldn't take everything she says completely at face value, of course, right? It just... It's impossible to know, but I will say that, like, in con in the context of, like, the other crypto scams and, and just, like, the weird nature of what it is fundamentally, yeah, I can see why people would be extremely skeptical. As narcissistic as Athene, whether yeah. the character or actually himself, up. has a hard time letting go or moving on from their once prosperous social media career. It's why, if you tune in, you'll see him live for... Six people, maybe, taking long breaks between his rants to address the lack of activity in chat. When you've achieved this level of delusion, nothing matters except the next breadcrumb of attention, validation, or support. I would venture to say that the articles written about him, including his Wikipedia, were probably by Athene's team, painting him in a positive light. Nothing is mentioned about scamming, scandals, and controversies strategically left out. It's not not as hard as you think to take over SEO, especially when you have a dedicated team from raising millions of dollars. I don't know if if he astroturfed the Wikipedia of himself. I feel like they probably would have they would have stopped him from doing that, but it could have just happened under the radar. Uh, I mean, for sure. For charity, to making worldwide news outlets, interviews, sponsors, partnerships, to scamming people through cryptocurrency, and clinging on to any hope of attention. The fall of Athene seemed inevitable once his facade began to fade. Athene wasn't the greatest gamer in the world. He understood clickbait and how to manipulate algorithms, both online poker and YouTube. His secret weapon- I think that if Athene had come back and he had just played video games, and he just made more funny videos like this, everybody would still watch him. Like nowadays, obviously coming back and doing it now would be weird, right? But like, cause like in the context of like everything that's happened, but I mean like if he had never stopped doing that, I, I think he, I think everything would have been fine. It's again, guys, never break character. Was exploiting the very games that he played. At one point in his career, Athene made the conscious decision to push his vision one step further. Yeah. Through the Singularity Group, he believed he could take his donations from the millions to the billions. Oh. Although, this was never the actual plan. Reese and Athene hid behind layers of irony while pushing their scam the entire time. The, the extent to which we are able to squeeze these poor suckers you wouldn't believe it and you're having trouble believing it right now you're having trouble grasping it right now but i would just say stick around in the chat for a few days and you will start to see what's really going on but it takes a while for you to understand that this is exactly what's going on we really built up this community we we took many many years of slowly building up uh a was it this guy in my stream Mono Ultra? I feel like this guy's in my stream. Yeah, he was. He's been following for two years. He has 84 messages in my chat. He was in chat a week ago, two weeks ago. Holy shit, how? So you guys always think that I, I don't see you. I don't know what you are. I don't know where you're at. Oh, by the way, oh, oh, just give me one second. Just because, you know, the, I don't want somebody saying it's fake. Yep. Of course. Oh, I see you. Court base of dumb suckers that happen to have quite some money from uh, mm -hmm. uh you know uh, rich mummies and daddies or something um and now we're finally cashing in on it athene understood that in order for all of his deranged it's a matter again of charisma is it like reese just wasn't funny that's the problem is it like you can scam the viewers it's fine 
But you've got to be funny when you're doing it. You can't just say, hey, we're scamming you guys. No, it has to be, there has to be like a little bit of a, of a song and dance goals to work, he would have to be in control. This is why he created a compound structure with volunteers that were viewed as dedicated workers. Athene masquerades as a hero of the people, all while lacking the self-awareness to realize that he's been digging his own social media grave this entire time. At this point, he clings to the hope of getting an ounce of his popularity back. He insists that he's still in control and has the answers. Admitting his mistakes or humility is not part of Athene's blurred amalgamation of his identity. There is no Bashir Bumaza, there is no Sharen, there is only the endgame character of Athene, a man who has adapted, but in all the wrong ways. His narcissism doesn't allow him to communicate genuinely. Viewers are left with scrambled minds. One could even mistake his gish galloping for intelligence. Some of you may feel sorry for Athene, as his channel now exists as an artifact of the past, with- I don't know if I necessarily feel sorry. I mean, fuck. Those videos were awesome. I used to love watching those videos. I, I you know, it, it's like, yeah, it was great. Like, yeah, now it's like some fucking crazy bullshit, but who gives a fuck now? Like, yeah, it was, it was great, man. Those videos were amazing. Ever declining views and streams that can only be described as ghost towns, it's apparent that Athene will never be accepted back. You know the founder of Scientology, what he said? L. Ron he said, if you want to make some money, start a religion. You start a business. But if you want to score big oh. bucks, you start a religion. Okay. I forgot the first part. Now you guys know where I got my inspiration from. Yeah. Why do you guys think I, I, I like to look like Tom Cruise? You think Read that's Dianetics, boys. Snap more for the cult, Felix. You learn everything about the, about Felix, the world. Thank you, man. $15. So if you guys come at me, right, and think you guys are, you know, ahead, and go like, man, a thing, a thing, like, like, make this in a fault, expose me. You know the beauty of the internet? I can say it right now, saying I'm just milking your little gullible fucking mindless, soulless fucking dumb brains. I can say it right now, and people are still throwing me money. I actually made more money the last five minutes I made the past days. You see? see, the problem is that if he acted like this all the time, people would watch him because it's kind of funny. The problem is whenever he's boring, just playing his own crypto game. Yeah, this is entertaining. People would sit around and watch this for sure. It's not funny, it's it's funny for enough people. Yeah, you're right. It might not be funny for you, but it's funny for a lot of people. Give me one second. Should streamers pay their mods? All right, all right, all right, guys. We gotta go to the next video. Give me a second, guys. Yeah, we gotta. Uh, give me one second. People. Um. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Anyway. So basically, here. One of you guys' channel is just makeup throws. Really grown since then. Yeah. I feel like this was uh, th these videos, the Fillion videos, are fucking amazing. I I love them. I, I think that obviously, like, there was a little bit more. Um. Uh, th there's a little bit more to the Athene stuff, but to be honest, I think this is a relatively fair shake. And also, like, it's just... The fact is that if you make good content, people will watch. That's it. Everything else is all, like, just a oh, little... Eh, yeah, it doesn't fucking matter. It's about the content. If the content is good then that's all that matters. And it doesn't matter if you scam people. It doesn't matter if you're super politically incorrect. If you say all the wrong words and do all the wrong things, as long as people like watching your videos, they're not going to care. And that's the truth. Yeah. Like all his content. Yeah. You, like I, I felt like I have entertainment trumps morality. Yes. People care more about being entertained than being moral. That's all there is to it. No fucks whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. It's like, again, you can use many examples. Jake Paul, Logan Paul, uh, Alex Jones, uh, Keemstar. Let's see. Who are some other ones? Uh, Trump. Yep. It doesn't, it doesn't matter what they do.
Yeah, it makes uh, Andrew Tate. Yeah, Andrew Tate. He just keeps making content. It's like they ban him off Twitter. Now he's back on Twitter. He's still tweeting. He's still going on about that shit. And people are there to see it. That's all there is to it. Ice Poseidon. Well, Ice Poseidon is a good example of the opposite. Ice Poseidon stopped doing the... If Ice Poseidon just started the next the, the next version of bum fights all of his old viewers would still be watching okay that's the truth they'd still be watching the reason why people stopped liking ice poseidon is he stopped doing the content that people liked seeing it's that simple bum fights was based yeah i remember watching that back in fucking high school in like the late 2000s early 2010s why do streamers hate viewers? Uh, I, I don't think streamers hate viewers. I think that this is actually the opposite. I think that a lot of streamers, and this is like, remember like, it is the thing, is like streamers always talk about like, oh, viewers are parasocial, viewers are parasocial, etc. right? Well, guess what? Streamers can be parasocial too. There are some streamers out there that get popular and it gives them this inflated sense of self-worth and then they think that they can do things that aren't entertaining and people owe them that popularity which is just simply not what's true yeah you're always going to have people that like you for you and everything like that but if you don't put out the content that people like seeing then less people are going to watch it and that's just the way it goes it's not it's not personal and how could it be you don't fucking know them how could it possibly be personal so yes i think that parasocial relationships absolutely go both ways and you saw that kind of like with the boogie video yesterday for example where it's like he feels like he has this parasocial relationship with his audience and he's talking to them as if they're like a close friend but they're really not they're just people that are consuming content and the sooner that you stop looking at the internet as a place for you to have meaningful connections with content creators and you just view people as entertainment the happier you'll be because you're not going to be living in a world that's full of lies that's what i think yeah I, I, what the fuck you don't like that and didn't like that was that was that too much it's just unhealthy and not good for anyone yeah exactly and uh don't some streamers and mod uh vip uh, then some streamer mod vip viewer yeah <laughs> so kai's mods would ban people in his chat and then dm them and extort them for money to get the to get unbanned it was so fucking funny like i like i mean he apologized for it he unmodded the guys again it, it was not he didn't know it happened like i mean what the fuck right so like it, it's not on him but it's just funny that shit was happening you know it's like my my own uh my my guys in my guild do this but like because it's in a, a streamer guild the wow guild it's totally fine you know, like, they even have, like, if you go to my, uh, my guild, you'll see, like, you know, paid Loy, paid AKA Fox Slayer, 10 gold for promotion. How the fuck do you think they all have epic flying mounts? Yeah, think about that. Yeah, it's just totally fucking normal. Exactly, your streamer, just viewers, it's in our relationship, always be, yeah, it, it's, a, and it's, it's not like it's a bad relationship or something like that, but I think that it's important to contextualize it around certain things, and it's also, it doesn't make it any less or any more transactional or anything like that, it's just living in a world that is real, rather than living in a world of make-believe. Your money's going to a good cause? Yeah, it is, it's so he can enchant his seventh dagger, so he uses it on one boss fight that he gets a fucking 93 parse on. Nobody gives a fuck.